I thought I'd do something a bit daring today, a bit avant-garde, something unexpected. I figured today I'd lend my thoughts to a figure that no one's ever really given any opinions on to my knowledge. So it pleases me to be the first to give you a very definitive look at Earthrise RC. RC of course made her debut in 1986 as part of the supporting cast of the very clunkily titled The Transformers The Movie. She's considered a big deal in the fandom because she was the first ever woman Transformer to ever be part of the main Autobot cast. Despite her prominence though, she spent years basically just getting screwed over by Hasbro. I mean, she was one of the only characters to not get a toy for that movie. Keep in mind, Naw got a toy. And she didn't. She actually went several decades without ever even getting her own toy, because Hasbro didn't think that younger boys, whom they thought of as their target demographic, wouldn't want to play with girl characters. You know, it's amazing how many dumb things happen because of the gender binary. Anywho, ever since the 2010s, we've finally been getting long overdue figures of RC, allowing her to come back into the spotlight. So let's see how this wondrous warrior stacks up with them. As far as capturing RC's character design in plastic goes, the overall look is right. Personally, I love RC's design, even though I know that deep down there's a part of me that kind of wants to be annoyed at it. I'll go into more detail on this later, but yeah, it's obvious that she was so clearly designed by a man who just had no clue how to handle the concept of a woman Transformer. Eh, uh, let's see here. Broads, they got them cabooses, right? Hey, toots, come on! <laughs> and undeniably, it absolutely falls into the trope of one woman in a group where everyone else is a man, and her color scheme is, you guessed it, PINK! But I actually really like RC's pink. I just love the idea of a pink Transformer since there aren't very many. So I'll take whatever pink representation I can get. Something that can't be faulted is the sculpted in detail and the general shape of everything. It never ceases to grab me when little attention to detail is included, adding to the idea that these are supposed to represent huge robots. This just does a fantastic job at looking like the character seen in the animation. The head also features great sculpting, although maybe I would have preferred a bit of pink on her face like the character design, but I think I'll survive. Love the blue on her eyes though, giving off such an alluring azure, piercing like a figure with nicely painted eyes. Something else that really hits home with me is the articulation. It's just so poseable and looks awesome no matter what stance she's in. Particular standouts are the double jointed knees, the frontward and backwards movement on her feet, the inclusion of ankle tilt, the 135 degree elbow joint, the waist rotation, and her hands being able to move in and out. RC comes with this clear blaster molded in this smoky looking translucent plastic. I'm not certain what compelled them to make the plastic translucent since I'm not sure see-through guns exist anywhere, except maybe the X-Men movies I suppose. But look here, the handle isn't a round peg like most other Transformers blasters, but her hands are sculpted as if to hold round things. So it just makes me a bit of a nervous wreck having her hold this gun that I fear will fall one day and I'll lose it forever or maybe gag to death on it. However, it actually does hold onto the gun rather sturdy, so maybe I'm just being fussy about nothing. You know, the usual. Alright, let's address the elephant in the room. The one thing people absolutely love to point out about this toy. Yeah, RC's kinda looking like she's wearing her finest Quasimodo cosplay with the big ol' yearly supply camping backpack. And hey, call me an apologist if you must, but I get why the figure has that? Look, the truth is, RC's G1 design just does have a backpack, so naturally a toy of her would also feature said backpack. Also, since real life matter and plastic can't just bend the laws of space like animation can, yeah, they maybe have to make some compromises to the robot along the way. How plausible do you think it is to make a $20 toy that looks like this that turns into this? So maybe that's why the backpack doesn't bother me too much. I can say it definitely doesn't look as bad in person as it does in pictures. But hey, good news, if it really upsets you, you can just unplug half the backpack off. Oh, now it's parts forming! Whoa. So wait, these people don't like how this figure has a backpack, but they also don't like that the backpack can come off? Hey, you know, whatever burns your bridge. But for me, look, it just does it for me. It gives you the option to have her sport a backpack more compact like her animation model has, and the piece that plugs off can be used as like a space skateboard. You know, I can dig it. Now she can shoot fools while she's on her way to work. I have to be honest though and say I actually glued on this back fin because it kept popping off. And lord knows I don't want an RC that's got to deal with a broken board. 
Well, how about next time you get a board that can handle the Neutron style? As far as the robot mode goes, I can definitely say that this is my definitive declaration that this is certainly great, except for the parts that are not. Transformation isn't too complicated. It's kind of to be expected for this sort of thing, but I can't help but enjoy it. Also, you don't need to detach the back half of backpack when going into car mode, although I do think you have to do it when going into robot mode. Hey, if I can wrap my feeble mind around that, I'm confident you can do it as well. And this car mode looks not quite perfection, but just close enough. The wheels are made out of the same translu- Oh. Hello, governor! Yeah, this has been another complaining point from folks, how the whole robot mode is basically just doing gymnastics while the backpack becomes the whole car mode. Because her whole car mode parts are cramped on her robot back, you can actually have her carrying it around like a sack. In Soviet Russia, car rides you! But I guess because of that, you can also make this optional trench coat fit. And if you're really sick, you can show off her hidden third mode, person ran over by RC. But hey, look, just deal with it. I just got done doing a whole rant about this for the robot mode and how I think it's fine, so I won't bludgeon you with that again. But yeah, I really can't complain about this card mode. I've seen jokes comparing it to a bar of soap, but like, it's supposed to look like RC's car mode, so shouldn't it try to look squeaky clean? I just really like this car mode. I wish the doors could have been painted gray like in the movie, but... I guess that's nothing I can't do myself, which of course means I never will. Again, the subtle sculpting super seizes the smiles for me, and I'm digging the tiny seat section, which, sure, is too small for anything to sit in, but it's the thought that counts when it comes to this kind of thing. I guess though, seeing how they bothered to paint the seats gray does kind of make it even stranger that they didn't paint the doors, though. Also, how are you even supposed to get in this thing? Look, I'm joking here, but I like to answer that question with a big ol' who cares. <laughs> You can store her blaster on the underside of her car mode, which actually looks pretty cool. It can also plug into the top of her hood section, which... isn't. It just looks like someone left their gun on a car. This isn't an attack mode, this is the start of a dangerous situation. This looks like the setup of a John Mulaney bit. There was that one time my crazy friend in college put that gun on that pink space car! But all in all, regardless of whatever minor gripes I could have, I can't help but like this figure. It's clear that the toy's design goal was to look as closely as possible to the animation model with a typical deluxe class budget. Achieving a workable toy of RC with screen accuracy to her robot and car modes is such a heavy task, I've only ever seen it happen once with Masterpiece RC, and you know that figure had more budget than this. Hey, I know this might be a bit obvious and entry-level discourse, but hey, it's the RC review. I kinda have to bring it up here, alright? I feel like the quote-unquote men characters have such a wide variety of interesting and diverse designs, like they were designed with the idea of transforming robot in mind, without ever thinking about how their gender will factor into it. But most of the women characters, especially in G1, were just the same hourglass body type that really doesn't seem compatible with the gimmick of turning into an entire car. Her body type isn't even really the issue here, I'd actually be super interested in getting men or non-binary characters like this. It's just the idea that they feel like all women need to be designed this way to be identifiable as women. Cause I guess their voices wouldn't do that? I feel like a lot of it comes down to many men just being closed minded on what a woman's body could look like. No seriously, I once heard someone say they didn't think Titans Return Windblade looked feminine enough. Mind you, this is what Titans Return Windblade looks like. I feel like my thoughts on this figure just come down to who I am as a person and what I prioritize in a toy. I've made it pretty clear in the past that I personally don't care about parts forming, and I don't even see anything inherently wrong with shell forming, but I know there are many out there who very much mind those things, and if you're one of those people, mate, this ain't for you. I guess because I'm just so done with the endless cynicism of the internet, people constantly pouncing on anything they think looks like an easy target, I just have a soft spot for things I feel get left behind or underappreciated. And if I'm the lone internet person to proudly claim I like Earthrise RC, then so be it. So yeah, Earthrise RC. I like it. It's okay. It's fine. Leave a like if you can, maybe subscribe, and I will RC you later.